Welcome, folks. We are tackling the down to zero number two challenge on Hacker Rank. This is a medium problem. Per usual, I'll be going over the problem, giving you some time to do it on your own, and then going over my solution. We are given Q queries. Each query consists of a single number N. You can perform any of the two operations on N in each move. The first move being if we take two integers A and B, where N equals the, the multiplication result of A times B and A cannot be one and B cannot be one, then we can change N to the max number uh, between A and, and B. Uh, number two is to decrease the value of N by one. Determine the minimum number of moves required to reduce the value of N to zero. And the value can be uh, anywhere between uh, zero and 10 to the six, apparently. So that's something to keep in mind. And here are some examples. So for example, if you're given the number three, you should say there are three steps, and if you are given the example of uh, four, you should be also given three steps. And the rationale for that is uh, something I, I'll go into a little bit more detail of here in my own like, little way. The rationale here is we have two two ways of approaching uh, and getting and reduce, reducing the number to zero. Just my, minus one. So for example, three. You can do you know minus one to get to two, minus one to get to one minus one to get to zero. So how many steps did that take? One, two, three steps. So that took three steps only uh, subtracting um, one. Well, what about the number four? If we start with number four, well, you could always take the rod of just always going down to zero. How many steps did that take? One, two, three, four. Whatever the number of n is, basically. You can always subtract one n number of times to get back to zero so the max steps there would be um, whatever that whatever whatever n is the other route though is to do that other weird uh, situation where you can look at the multiples and basically you're looking at what numbers it takes that you can multiply to get to whatever that is so in the case of four we have uh, you can multiply two and two together so you can ha actually have two and two and whichever number comes out, you should take the max of it. So in this case, twos are the max of itself. So we'll just stick with one of the twos and drop the other one. Um, but effectively, we then now work with two. And then we can say, OK, well, two, you can go down to one and go down to zero. And let's see how many steps that took. So that took one, two, three steps. So taking that route, and by the way, two, uh, you can't really break that down any more than that. So once you get to like three and two and one, it's like that's it's as as broken down as it can be. Um, but in this case, we would go with the route of uh, three here. So the answer for this one would be steps equals three, and that's the rationale behind um, why this one uh, this answer here works the way it is. Option two is better. That's why we go with three moves. So you always go with the most optimal moves. All right. So that's the problem. Uh, go ahead and take some time to try this on your own, and we'll be back with my solution. Um, the thing with this question that kind of threw me off was the idea of being greedy with the algorithm. Uh, so it was a fairly simple task of just taking n and then comparing each number with the the best, quote unquote, the best multiple. Uh, so for example, I would go with um, let's say let's say n equals ten for example equals ten. That's like the max that you could possibly have the number of steps be just the number of n. Well, I know that five, uh, sorry, 10 can be broken down into five and two. And so that's like the other, the alternative route five. And you'll notice this, that all the prime numbers, what well, you can't break them down, obviously. So for the route, once you get to five, once you get to that kind of number, you have to at least tick down one, at least to, to get anywhere. So you have to bring this down to four. And once you're at four, you can go two and two. And that can go one, zero. So in this situation, 10 can go, uh, 10 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as its optimal number of steps. Uh, and so that's 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 kind of my, my algorithm there. So what I would do is I would, I would uh, or the original algorithm that I had that wasn't working very well was to do this greedy algorithm. Um, but I want to show you a situation where that will not work as well as you think it does. So here for 60, you can break down 60 any number of ways. But um, effectively, you want to start. You would want to start uh, 
again being greedy, we are you have like the maximal um, divisors. Okay, so you have like six and ten here, and six is the smaller value, so we're going to go with the max. And once you get ten, you can grab five and two, and then five is four, which goes to two, one, zero. Eventually, you would get one, two, three, four. Five, six equals six. And you might think, okay, well that's that must be the minimum because what I've done in this first step is I've I've kind of minimized the uh, the difference between the two. Okay, that's that's certainly what I was thinking. Um, but let's check out sixty and let's break it down in a slightly different way. So five times twelve would give you sixty, of course. So that's another way of doing it. Less greedy, obviously, but let's see what happens here. Uh, so you can break your 12 down uh, fairly quickly into 3 and 4. And then that gets broken down into 2, 1, 0. Let's count how many steps that took. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 5. So what I'm trying to showcase here is that the greedy algorithm is not going to work the way you think it does. So I ended up having to uh, approach it through a dynamic uh, solution. So what that looks like is like this. Once you've found a divisor, the smaller one you ignore. So you're only, you're only going to keep the big one. So for each number in our list, we should look for all the possible multiples of that number within our 10 to, six, 10 to the sixth power list and uh, assess, okay, if you had that as the maximum number, as a maximum multiple or divisor, then um, the, the most efficient number would be just one more than what's currently at that position. So what we have here are, is our um, pre-pre-computed array, effectively, uh, or list, and it is, uh, the indices are on the top in gray there and italicized, and the bottom are values um, that, that are associated with those indices. And so right now we haven't done any, anything, it's just the value of n at each step. So if I say, uh, hey, if, what, if n is equal to 5, I would say, okay, well, I would just indices 5 and say, okay, 5 is... The number of steps because that's like you just subtract one and that's the number of steps it would take um, so we haven't actually done any any real work here so he, here's the concept we're going to go in order all the way through the, our, our entire list and remember here that the the total list length is going to be 10 to the 6 because of that's what the that's what the question says so we're gonna have a very large list uh, initially uh, that we're going to pre-compute and the idea is we're gonna go one at a time um, but we have some starter numbers, uh, and basically that's 0, 1, 2, and 3, because you can't really break that down any further. Once you get to 4, uh, we'll see that you can, you know, you can kind of go from 4 to 2 and, and go through that. Um, but uh, the idea is we're going to go each uh, in order, starting from 2 actually, not, you don't need to care about 1 or 0, uh, but starting from 2, we're going to go all the way up throughout the entire list. So let's say, for example, that I have the number 2. In order for it to be the max multiple of a, of a breakdown, it needs to be either uh, compared to a 1, 2, or a 2 and a 2. That's kind of the, the biggest that it can be. Because once 2 becomes the uh, smaller number, then it gets discount, it gets, uh, you know, it's irrelevant. Um, so, so to make it a multiple, you have to say, okay, 2 times 1, well, that's 2. And then you can say, okay, well, 2 times 2, well, it's 4. I'm going to look at the current value at 2. So let's say I see 2 times 2. 2 times 2. Well, that will give me this in the indices. That gives me the four indices. And then I will say, OK, what value um, would I be ef efficient with, uh, most efficient with? Uh, the 2 that I'm currently in, which has the value 2, plus 1. Because in order for me to get down there, I need to do that um, that multiplication step, or you know, step option number one. So I'm going to need to go with I need to compare three versus what's currently in there, which is four. I'm going to say three is less than four. And I'm going to pick that one, and so I'm going to go into that cell and say, okay, you're actually a three. That's more efficient. 
And at that point, I'm, I don't need to go any further because two times two, and that'd be the maximum for that. So I, I'd be done at that point. And then we step to three. So the three times two situation will give me six. So that tells me which indices to look for. So I look for this one. And then at that position, I say, okay, what did my, my current position is, th is three. My current value here is three. I'm going to compare one plus that, which is four, and compare that to what's in there. So it's going to be four versus currently six. I'm going to say four is less, and then go in here and change that to a four. And you basically keep through doing that through all the numbers here. Um, so you can go through four. My my value here is seven, so I'm not going very far. But that's the that's the concept here. Okay, so let's go over the solution here. Um, so one thing I will note is that because we're we, we're pre-computing the list, we actually are going to be doing that outside of the function. So that's what we see here in my code. That uh, this all this stuff here from here all the way down to this uh, is all in the global space, and then the actual function is quite small. Um, what I've done here is I've uh, basically passed. I, I'm, I'm I'm changing the signature that it, it's in such a way that it's passing in the pre the pre-computed list. I think that's just better design, not using the stuff from the global space. Um, but anyway, that's that's what we see here. And then within this um, this code that was already kind of provided, I'm I've changed this function signature again to to include that pre-computed list as a variable um, that's being passed in. But you can see the function itself is quite small because once you have the pre-computed list, you just you're just you're just doing a lookup. So it's actually big O of one because it's constant. You don't need to do too much to to look this thing up. Um, but let's talk about the pre-computing step. So I've set up a max n, which is what we're told is ten to the sixth. So that's what I'm doing here. And basically, I'm going to start off with that um, that kind of like dumb list uh, where each value is its own index because that represents the number um, just counting down to one, to zero one step at a time. Um, so I'm doing li uh, first. I'm creating a range um, max n plus one because I'm being ex uh, because it, uh, it is exclusive. So I want the max n to be the literal that last note value, and I'm just coercing that to a list, and that's basically that's it. That's the starting pre pre computed list. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at number two. Uh, we could, because one and zero don't really matter, but you know two um, does get factored in. So we're going to start at, from two and then go all the way through the list one number at a time. Uh, and I'm doing uh, max n plus one because again it's, it's exclusive. Uh, and what we're going to look at is the current value, which is the element that it's currently at, as well as the previous value. And I, I didn't talk about this when I was mentioning this um, this list before, but we need to kind of look at uh, the number in front of the current number. Why? Because you have some situations where, like for example, a prime number which cannot be broken down. Uh, where the only option you really have is to subtract one and then look at the thing in front of you, basically. Um, and so, for example, uh, if I go back here to this example here, so if I'm a, a seven, for example, then um, the only thing that I only option I really have is to subtract one, which would mean I'm at the six, and I just need to take the value of the six and then add one more step into that. So this this seven should be a five. And the five, for, well, five is also prime, so five would, you know, look one ahead to the four and say, okay, just one more on top of that. So this would be a, this would, this should be a four. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing for this step here, um, where I'm just I'm using this preval uh, previous value and seeing, okay, is the current value larger than the previous value plus one? If it is, then I know I should just use that previous value plus one instead of the current value. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just uh, just setting the current value to that, and I'm also resetting the actual variable called curval, since I'll be using this current value later. Uh, but once you have that one little caveat um, addressed, then we're going to loop through every possible multiple of that number i. Uh, and again, it needs to be the max multiple. So um, for for example, with like three, for example, I I shouldn't do three times four because four would be the max in that multiplication and so three would never be considered in the first place so it needs to be you know three times three two times three one times three but you don't you don't need to look at one times three because it currently is itself so you don't need to care about that so I'm starting here um, for J in range starting from two and this J is going to be like the multiple uh, the second multiple that's less than I less than or equal to I, I should say uh, and uh, going up to basically I uh, because three times three is okay, and that's that's fine to do. So we are going to say i times j, and that will give us our multiple that we're looking at. 
Um, one uh, small caveat here is that when we are multiplying like this, we might go out of the range of the or the array. And so if that happens, I'm just saying, um, if that happens, just break uh, because we don't want to deal with that situation. That'll break this for loop. But with, if you are within the range, then we are looking at a initial value. So we look at the pre-computed list and the whatever that uh, position of the multiple is. So for example, with three times three, you'd look at the ninth position. And that is the thing you're going to consider here. And that'll be the initial value. And you're basically checking, OK, is that initial value greater than the current value? So if I'm at 3, I'm at like, what is the value of 3 right now, uh, which should be uh, 3. And uh, it, would, it is going to look and say, OK, is 3 greater than whatever is there right now, which is probably 9. Um, and uh, it, sorry, is 9 greater than, than 3 plus 1, which is 4. Then uh, if, that could, if that is a situation, then you want to change that position, the ninth position, to the current value plus 1, which would be 4. Uh, because what would, that, what would that look like? That basically means that um, 9 is broken down to 3 and 3, and that 3 takes 3 steps. Uh, but in order to get there, you have to take one step. So it's four total. That's why. Um, and you basically keep doing that for each multiple within this for loop. Once you do that, you go through the entire array. Uh, and by the end, you will have a pre-computed list where each position is the number of steps, it, uh, the, the least number of steps possible that it took to get to that position. Uh, for the example of the 60, what that looks like is you're getting there from it's possible to get there from the 10 because uh, let me go back so the first time you go through you might you're gonna hit 10 first because uh, you're going in order so you go 10 times 6 and the 10 is the um, the, the larger multiple there and so it would say okay that that's equal to 6 but then when you hit 12 12 will f will uh, also hit the 60 position and it'll say oh actually my number uh, is um, five that's my best number and so it'll just get replaced there and it's always prioritizing the, the least number so um, that's how this algorithm is working um, the pre-computing stuff does take a while but because of how it's set up it's done all at once and never again and so that's um, why we're kind of like cheating in terms of like big O notation uh, because it's well it's not that much of a cheating because it's like big O of a constant basically because you're never changing that it's a large constant but it's not changing once you get it done and once it's done you have it in memory and you can just uh, look it up so that's that's actually quite efficient if you ask me uh, the function itself is quite simple it takes an end and as well as the pre-computed list that we just made and if n is less than three it can just you can just return whatever n is because that's um, that's what that's how that the first few values work uh, otherwise return the pre-computed list and the nth value on, on that list uh, and that's lookup time so it's basically constant um, and that is the solution so let's run this let's run some code okay looks good and let's uh, run some so submit some code bada bing bada boom uh, so this one definitely took me a, a little bit of time because uh, of the pre-compute stuff I didn't quite get that uh, I thought it, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't realize I could do that for one thing I, I mean I knew, I knew I could do that kind of thing I just think didn't think it applied to this situation um, so I was definitely looking at the discussion and kind of figure it out from from there so uh, no shame in uh, getting help folks this one uh, I required a little bit of help on this one for sure uh, but once I did definitely it, it, I, I, I understood the problem I think that was the thing that um, helped me the most is just I had a really strong understanding of like what was being asked implementing it was kind of the challenge um, and using like dynamic programming was also something that I wasn't quite um, as familiar with I definitely could use some some work on that the idea of like doing it bottom up building this thing at bottom up that I was I was doing this top down approach and it was that was the greedy algorithm that just just wasn't working uh, and it took me a while to struggle on that Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Is this the, if this is the kind of thing that you uh, like uh, hearing and, and going through, definitely leave a like, subscribe, comment, do all the good things, and I will see you around for the next one. Take care.